What is happening everybody? Welcome back to another video. If you missed the last one, we had to repaint the tailgate. So we got that all repainted. We did some mods to the paint booth to hopefully fix some issues with overspray, moving air and overspray out of the booth. So hopefully all that's gonna work. We haven't tried that out. So as you know, we ordered up some slow hardener for the clear coat just to help it flash a little bit slower and help it flow out. So we're just kind of burning up some time waiting for that stuff to get here so we can jump on the rest of the truck and finish that up. We do have to go through, sand the whole truck, get that all ready, finish up the doors and spray out our chip guard along the bottom of the doors. But in today's video, we're gonna take care of some stuff that's really been bugging me, as you guys know. Like I said, this bed has been bugging me. So what I want to do real quick, or however long it takes, probably not real quick, but I wanna go through and sand all this orange peel out. What I'm going to do is do my first sand with, I think 1500 grit, and then I'm gonna let that sit for a couple days. While I'll probably do the hood as well, right over there, that one has not much peel at all. But get these sanded just because I'm waiting for everything else to be able to finish the paint. So what we're going to start with for sanding is I'm going to nib it with 1200. That just means go through and hit all these dirt specks, get all that out. And then we're going to use the DA with a soft interface pad. You can see that's about a, I think that's a half inch pad, really soft. We're going to use this purple 1500 grit. Uh, it's a purple finishing film 1500 so we're going to use that dry we're going to go over the whole thing wherever we can get with the da we're not going to be able to get in all these little tight body lines so we're going to have to come back and hit those by hand but that is going to take out the majority of the orange peel very fast doing it dry is a lot faster and it's a lot easier because you know when it's flat when you're sanding wet it's hard to tell when it's flat you have to dry the panel completely off and check it that way when you're doing it dry you just wipe it down or blow it off real quick and you can see if the orange peel is out so that's what the plan is we're gonna hit it with 1500 grit get it knocked down and then i got these uh, trizac pads i got a 5000 and a 3000 these we're gonna do wet and those just take out all the scratches get it ready for a buff so this is a whole new system i've never really tried to color sand with the da you got to be very careful because on some of these if you were to come across this right here with the da and if you're not at the right angle you could burn through that corner or that body line really fast so you got to be very careful i'm just going to hit the majority of the flat areas and then i'm going to come back through by hand and just flatten all this out like in down in here flatten all that out by hand just to make sure we don't burn through anywhere and have to start repainting stuff All right, a few minutes later, we got this thing all flattened out. I don't know why I waited so long to try 
to uh, color sand or at least flatten orange peel with the DA. It was so fast, so easy. I didn't burn through anywhere, even on these corners. You just gotta pay attention to what you're doing, where the pad is at, and what you're sanding. So just be very careful. So I'm gonna come back through and hit that body line, that body line right there a little bit. I'm not gonna worry about underneath the flares. And then we gotta just get this body line right there. One thing I'm going to do really fast is throw on a 3000 and a 5000 and polish up a little area just because I want to make sure everything is good. If you look right here, you can see you can barely, barely see a little bit of texture. I'm hoping that that'll kind of smooth out throughout the, the rest of the polishing and sanding process just because I want to leave as much clear coat on as we can. So I got it really close, kind of, it's kind of like that scattered everywhere, just really, really really light orange peel so let's uh do a little test piece probably let's do it right here you can see this area has got some peel in it so let's throw on some three and some five thousand trizac wet buff this area real quick and see what happens <laughs> All right, you can see the difference there between that is 1500 grit and then uh, you could probably kind of fade it into 3000 and then that's 5000, which that is almost shiny. And that I didn't really spend too much time on that. But honestly, now I'm very, very anxious to polish it. So I'm gonna do a little test polish right here. Just one step, just to bring the shine back and see how it looks. So I am mainly excited because I bought a freaking super nice polisher. So this is a Roops. This is actually a dual action uh, polisher and supposedly one of the best ones you can get. And then I bought the whole Roops uh, polishing kit. So there's three compounds. There's five pads. There's two wool. There's one coarse, one medium wool, and then a fine, a coarse, and then a fine, well I guess that white one is polishing, but of course, and a fine uh, foam pad. So I probably won't need the aggressiveness of a wool pad. I'm just gonna do uh, one step with the coarse and the foam. So that'll be blue and blue. We'll just do one step real quick on here, just to see, I'm really anxious to see how the polisher works and see how this paint looks all polished up. My goodness, guys, this looks so good. This, I actually ended up doing a uh, fine polish too. If it'll focus on there, you can see the clarity. That thing looks so good. There's no scratches at all. Kind of back the light up so you can see the reflection a little bit better. Camera doesn't like to focus on it, but either way, that is really good. That looks super good. And that was just really quick on the Trizac and the polish. So let's get back to it. Let's stop messing around. Let's go through, hit all these little body lines. And then, like I said, I want to let it sit for probably a couple days. We'll jump on the other side, get that cut down nice and flat. And then we'll cut the hood down and then let that sit. Like I said, a couple days, you want to let it completely gas off. And then we'll do our final sand and polish.
All right, it's the next day now. We got everything ready. We got a knock down with 1500 grit. I'm getting a little antsy. I just want to get this done. So we're going to throw on 3000 Trizac. Actually, I already got it loaded up here. And we're going to hit everything with a 3000 and the 5000. And then we're going to jump into our polishing, get it polished out. I think I'm going to do two steps right now. And then once I get the truck together, I'll go over the entire truck with the uh, final polish step. So let's get this busted out, get this thing shiny again. All right, we got everything sanded, 3,000 and 5,000. You can see, obviously it's not super shiny, but it's honestly got quite a bit of shine to it with just the 5,000. So that's gonna make buffing so easy, especially with that new buffer. This stuff's gonna shine up so fast. In the past, I've really gone up to like 2,000. Even with hand sanding it at 2,000, it takes forever to buff those scratches out. So this is gonna be so much easier to buff. And if you guys are curious, if what three and 5,000 does to paint not going over like 1,500 grit scratches, this is all 1,500. And then right around here where my flares sit, is is just sprayed and then I hit it with 3000 and 5000. You can see it does a little bit, flattens it out a little bit. There's still quite a bit of peel in it. But like I said, I'm not worried about it because that's covered up anyway. So we're gonna get all the buffing stuff out and buff this stuff out. Like I said, we're gonna do two steps right now. Once we get the truck back together, we'll go through and do a final polish on everything.
All right, we got the hood done with both steps. I gotta say it turned out freaking amazing other than these little rock chips there really bugged me, but I missed them. It is what it is. Anyways, the back to the buffing. This actually took a lot longer than it should have because I think I got pigtails in it from sanding. Somehow, I think it was with a 1500 grit. Somehow I got pigtails in. I can barely see a few of them, but I'm not gonna go through and re-sand the entire hood. So I'm gonna have to live with it. All in all, it looks 99%. I was able to buff them out. It just took a lot longer. So I'm really, really hoping I didn't get pigtails in the whole bed. That's gonna be a kind of a nightmare. I might have to start resanding stuff, but all in all, this looks freaking amazing. So next thing I wanna do is the tailgate. Like I said, hopefully there's no pigtails in this. I'm gonna bring this out and get this thing buffed out and we'll see how it looks. There's a few pieces of dirt here and there that I really didn't wanna sand too deep. So. There's a couple imperfections, but it is what it is. I painted this in my shop and we're gonna have to live with a couple defects here and there, but all in all, I am so, so happy with how this hood looks. The metallics laid down super even and now that this clear is cut and buffed, it really, really looks good. So if you guys don't know what pigtails are, let's go over it real quick. So dry sanding does have its ups and downs. Like I said, it is a lot faster. I think it's a lot cleaner and you can actually see what you're doing. But the downside is you can get pigtails which are like quarter inch circle, kind of half circle scratches from the DA if you pick up a piece of dirt. I've also heard just the buildup of the dried clear coat on the sanding disc can create those tiny little deep scratches. So I think why I got the pigtails is I didn't clean the pad and the panel often enough and I didn't change out the pads often enough. I guess you gotta change them out pretty quick and you can almost kind of see them while you're sanding. I just kind of thought that's how it looked when you sanded it, but you could almost see just little tiny uh, scratches while you were dry sanding. Like I said, I've never dry sanded before, so now I know what to look out for as soon as you see those little tiny, they're like quarter inch circles, like I said, and it's like a half circle scratch. If you see those while you're sanding, stop, Either replace your sanding disc or just clean it off, clean the panel off, go at it again, and make sure you don't have those tiny little scratches. So that's kind of what I'm fighting right now. I'm hoping the tailgate and the bed don't have it, but either way, let's get the tailgate out and start buffing that out. All right, we got our two steps done on the tailgate. And I will say there wasn't nearly as many pigtails in it. So I did buff out a lot faster and it really did turn out good. So now let's jump on the bed. We haven't even started buffing this yet. So hopefully there's not a whole lot of pigtails and it'll go pretty quick. So let's grab the blue pad. And I have actually, if you guys are curious, I have actually tried the foam and the wool pad. I don't really notice much difference between the two. I notice the wool pad is easier to get in some of these body lines. So that's what I've kind of been using for the tighter body lines. The wool pad does buff smoother. So for the big open areas, I could uh, probably swap to the wool pad and it's a little smoother going. But either way, as far as I'm concerned, both pads work about the same in cutting.
All right, guys, we are finally done with our full cut and buff on everything we've painted so far. So, all in all, looks very good. I am so happy with how this turned out after the cut and buff. It looks obviously nice and flat. There's still just maybe just a touch of texture, but the good thing is it's all even and it looks really good. So, very happy with how that turned out. Here's this side. If I I don't remember if I showed you guys this side. Also, I wanted to show you the body work I did down here, which I'm extremely proud of. You can see down here, doesn't look like anything ever happened. There's no waviness, no uh, weird looking spots at all. And this whole corner was all crunched up. I do have to give some credit to the PDR guy, but I am very proud of myself. I am not very good at body work. And well, I guess I'm starting to get the hang of it, but either way, we are looking really, really good. So we gotta put this bed away. I'll probably put it in the paint booth for now. These are the doors we gotta finish up and we just gotta do our final block on them. Make sure they are flat and then we gotta jump on the truck. We do have to actually pull all the stuff out of the drivers or passenger doors, the windows, gaskets, all that stuff. Other than that, we are pretty much ready to go. We just gotta go through, clean it and sand it all down. I don't think there was any body damage, any little dings or anything. I hope not. If so, we'll fix those, but not a huge deal. So that is going to be the next video. We got to jump on here. The roof is all done, flat blocked, everything good to go. We do have to go sand it, but it is, all the body work is done. There was just that one dent in the center of the very front of the roof, which you can't see anymore. Well, that's it guys. Super happy with how this turned out. Couple things I wanna talk about. One of those pigtails, this passenger side of the bed, which I sanded first, had very, very minimal pigtails in it and it buffed out so much faster and so much easier. So like I said, I know I already kind of talked about it, but just be careful when you're dry sanding with a DA, you can put some pretty deep scratches in and they are a pain to buff out. Another thing I wanna talk about is the buffer. So very happy with how that buffer works. I would say it's probably not as aggressive as a rotary buffer. So that's why I tried to refine the scratch to a 5,000 and buff it out that way. I have buffed out like 2,000 grit scratches with the rotary and it works okay, it still takes a while, but this takes a little bit longer than a rotary, but the end result is a lot better. I've always fought swirl marks on black or dark colors like this. And with a rotary, it, it puts those holograms or swirl marks in the paint and they're hard to buff out and they're hard to get perfect with a dual action like this buffer here. You don't get that. You don't get the holograms and the scratches, the swirl marks. It looks perfect. So very happy. We still have one more step too. Well, like I said, once we get the truck all back together, we're going to go through with the final polish step and that should really bring up the shine. But as of right now, this thing looks amazing. So I'll link this polisher down below if you guys want to check it out. It is a little bit more expensive. It was like 450 for the polisher and the whole compound and pad kit. But I would say if you do this on a regular basis or do it somewhat often, I think it's worth it. It looks so much better than any other project I have done with my rotary. So I would say that buffer is worth it. So go check it out. Well, that's a wrap guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Go smash that thumbs up button, comment, subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.